All right, next we are getting into chapter one with properties of numbers, specifically with this IXL, uh, properties of addition and multiplication. Um, this will probably be one of the quicker explanations, but we'll still go through until we have answered a couple questions. Let's get started. So with this one, it asks, which equation shows the identity property of multiplication? So there's going to be three to, we'll say four, um, kind of overarching, oh, overarching properties that we'll use for both addition and multiplication. So um, identity is basically any time we are getting the original thing back as the number. So we'll write on here. Let's go with pinkish color, purple maybe. So with addition, what that would look like with an identity is like a number, so like X. We're going to add something to it, and we want to get that thing back. That's an identity. So we need to think what plus a number gets that original number back. That'd be zero. So if we're looking for an identity with addition, it's going to be that number plus zero equals itself. Multiplication, it would be x times something gives us x. I'm getting a little bit better at writing on the screen here. Uh, so we need to think about what times something times what number gives us a, that same thing. And multiplication, that is 1. So we need to look through our options here. And we find that we do have an instant of a number h, whatever that value is, but times 1 equals itself. So that's an identity. So that's what we'll go with for that one. Oops, I didn't click on it. Uh, x. There we go. I panicked for a second right there. Okay. Next, um, distributive property of multiplication. This is the kind of like tweener one I said, because you won't really run into this with addition, just multiplication. But basically what we're looking for, I'll use A, B, and C as our letters, or as our variables here to stand for whatever values. So basically what distribution is, or the distributive property is some number, we'll say A, times second number plus a third number, so like that. That's the same as individually multiplying the first number times each of those and adding it together. So multiplying A times the group of B plus C is the same thing as multiplying A and B and adding that to multiplying A and C together. Okay, so let's look for one that fits that format. Um, not here, not here. We need, as I'm trying to answer these quickly, what I'm doing is eyeballing three different variables. So here I see um, u, v, and w. Okay, so even though it's subtraction, it works the same way. w times this in parentheses is the same thing as u times w minus v times w. Same idea. So this could be subtraction is basically what it's showing you. Um, that's because you can turn any subtraction into addition, just adding a negative number. So it works the same way. Okay. I like that it clears that for me. Probably wouldn't be so nice on some other, uh, in some other instances, but for IXL it works. Which equation shows the zero property of multiplication? I don't think I really even need to write anything out with this one. The zero property basically means that anytime we multiply something times zero, we get zero back. And that's this case here. So I'm looking for zeros anytime I see zero property. Okay, next. Which equation shows the associative property? So uh, associative is basically, you can kind of think about the word like associate. Doesn't matter if you if you're only doing addition or only doing multiplication, as long as you're within an operation like that, doesn't matter if you do the first two things first 
or if you add the last two numbers first, or if you multiply the first two numbers or something like that. So basically what we could say is we'll use A, B, and C again. Um, A plus B plus C equals A plus B plus C, but we're not done yet. So basically this, so if I add A and B first and then add C, is the same thing as if I add B and C first and then add A. So if we look through, we notice that we have K, M, and N in the same thing, the same kind of setup here. It flip-flops it around the equal sign, but that's okay because we know um, they're symmetric, so one side of the equal sign is equal to the other. That's fine. Okay. Um, commutative property of multiplication. Um, that's just dealing with an individual two items being added or multiplied. Basically, if you think about like communication or communicating with somebody, like talking to somebody, um, if I talk to you, or if let's say I'm communicating with you, you're communicating with me, means the same thing. Um, so an example in numbers or in variables, what that would look like would be x plus y is the same thing as y plus x. The order doesn't matter with addition or with multiplication. Now, subtraction and division, on the other hand, order does matter, but with these, it doesn't. So that's commutative, and that would be this one. Okay, so I think we've talked about our um, four different um, properties now, so we'll wrap up here. Identity is whenever you get itself back as an answer. So that would either be something plus zero or something times one. Um, associative, like this one, is you can do the first two things and then add a third, or you can do the last two things and add the first, doesn't matter that way. Um, commutative is just flip-flopping the two like we just had, like x times y is the same as y times x. And then finally distribution is multiplying into a group or a set of parentheses or brackets or something like that is the same thing as multiplying by each individually and then either adding or subtracting them together. All right, we'll call it here. Um, and we're officially into some new videos on chapter one. I already had some of them filmed, so that's good. All right, so we will see you guys.